Hi, we are so excited to be here. Um, we are going to do a recap of the first session of the Mastering Your Recovery Virtual Summit series. Um, in the series, we're talking about specific details um, in regards to playing hurt versus playing injured in this first session and what happens when these issues are um, handled well or not. Um, what you, we decided to pull out a couple of the nuggets from each of the speakers and to kind of give you an overview and let you get a taste um, of, of what to expect, um, how valuable the information is, and to encourage you to get a ticket to come to the rest of the series. Um, the series is five more sessions currently um, we may end up doing more because we find that there's a lot of information that's out there and there are constantly um, more um, types of modalities that are becoming available um, throughout the world um, some things are available in other countries but are not available here in the u.s and then vice versa and then also you want to be able to find a uh, practitioner that is very um, adept at creating the types of phenomena that are required whenever you get or whenever you find that you need to um, delve into the world of integrative options when it comes to recovering. So my name is El Kersey and I am your host for the Virtual Summit series and this is Erica Bates. She is the producer of this wonderful event. So she is a fantastic summiteer and summit strategist. Um, I'm going to let her tell you what she does and why she does it. <laughs> Hey, I'm Erica Bates. I'm a virtual summit strategist. What I do is I help you host your first or next virtual summit. And I do this by helping you come up with uh, strategies, platforms, and uh, repurpose your content. And that's what I do. I'm Kevin Booker. Um, I am the CEO and the creator of Urban Media Productions. Uh, we do various numerous things when it comes to just media, but more or less just um, providing a progressive view of just Southern, like eccentric and just authentic southern culture here in south carolina specifically and just around all southern states and just try to give our people a voice of, especially for my generation first product is urban topic which is a podcast and it's also a recorded show um it's available on youtube and on spotify and many, many numerous other podcasts um landing spots but um the, the main thing of, of just urban topic in itself shed light and spotlight anyone in our region in our community and just around our area as far as anything that they're doing positive progressive and just trying to just be forefronters of our culture and just putting it to the next level and just continue to lead the way awesome well thank you so much mr booker for sharing yeah. what i wanted you specifically here to talk about is um i know that you used to be a athlete oh yes and um you can talk about how um the topics that were brought up during the uh, the first session of the summit and how they actually apply to um, recovery and sports in general and as a grown man you know now that you're running your own business how um, those types of things um, affect you later right so that's kind of like injuries and things how they affect you later first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show um a clip from the series this is angela pride she was our color commentator when she did an awesome job and if you and so even though we're going to show clips here the um, entire session is available on multiple platforms so our so we're going to go ahead and run our first clip <laughs> 
But I don't tell young men and young women now that, you know, if you're hurt, if you're injured, and I know it's so competitive out here, nobody wants to lose your spot. Nobody wants to run the risk of not playing, but you only get one body. And if you don't get anything from this talk today, understand that you only have one body and you don't get another one. So when that body continues to get beat up and beat up and beat up, you know, I don't think you're designed to play. Um, take Tom Brady, for instance, 20 years. That's unheard of. So the point that she made was that there's only one, you only get one body. So it's important from, you know, the perspective of the summit that we are really focused in on caring for that body to the, the, for the longevity and, and well-being and, um, quality of life, right? Um, towards your later years, even though when you're young, we always think, oh, we're invincible and it's going to be fine. Kevin, what do you think about that? I mean, just me speaking on myself, um, I played in high school. I was a high school athlete. Um, I was pretty good. I wasn't, I didn't get any offers. Well, I actually got a track scholarship to Morris College, but I didn't look, I didn't take it up on, you know, take it up on it. But um, I played football. I played basketball, I ran track, and I also was a stellar, base, stellar baseball athlete as well. All through high school, all through like, I started playing when I was five. I know baseball for certain. But one thing I know that when we were young and I experienced numerous injuries, especially from football, is that um, when you're young, you seem to think that your body is expendable. Like, oh, I, I got time to get that back right when, once I get older, but not knowing that today, like I'm 32 and I'm, I, I think I'm 18, so that's about what? 14 years ago when I played seriously, like actually played like regulated ball. Um, I still suffer injuries to my knee. Like I never tore anything, but I had like numerous knee bruises and, and as much cuts and like I'm, I'm small and I was very quick. So a lot of my talent relied specifically on my agility and my speed. And so with that being said, um, I got so much pain in my knees when it gets cold that it's ridiculous. And just by getting in contact with Miss L of, of Lux Maverick, um, I see the importance of integrating medicine and how it kind of strays people away from, which I'm totally against it just using pres prescription drugs or having numerous, numerous surgeries that isn't, that isn't really like fixing the issue completely. It's just like putting a bandaid over, over, over open wound and so to speak. And so just with integrated me me um, medicine and, and just with this injury recovery that you guys are just spotlighting. I think it's I think it's highly critical and highly pivotal for anyone that's actually an athlete or doing anything, especially not even just an athlete. Like even if you just do construction work, like if you do strenuous strenuous work on your body for more than six hours a day, you definitely need to make sure that you're recovering your body at a correct way, a correct state. Um, I mean, you guys are doing an awesome job. Like I'm all for it. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, I understand. Like seriously, I understand. I still I still get this pain every day. It's horrible. Walking up steps. Wow. Erica? High school, I ran track a long time ago. I'm 43 now, and you only get one body. I was thinking when I was younger, still now, I don't know what old is. I want to do things, and I get up sometimes. I have a knee pain uh, or hip pain, and I'm like, oh, that's just something that's going to go away in a minute. <laughs> you know, you don't think about these things when you're younger. Or it's like, what's it going to be like when you get older? Like, you should try to take care of your body because you only got one, like Angela was saying, throughout your whole life to um, make it work better, have you feel better throughout your whole life. Not just that one time you're in um, a track meet or um, a sporting event for it to work for that one moment of glory. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And from, okay, so from not from the summit perspective, but from my own personal perspective, I always feel like we, we assume that those aches and pains that like, like our grandpas, you know, like get up ah, in the morning, you hear me? <laughs> and you know, all those kind of things they are or when they get up off the chair, you know, that kind of thing that is just because they're old. That's not true. It's because they had old injuries that they didn't get to resolve. And I see it all the time, just from over the years of helping people kind of overcome those things. Um, it's, it, they're always surprised 
you know and I'm like well you had like this is like this because of this you know all your body I'm, I say a lot that everything in your body is connected so an uh, old injury can cause you to have a new problem you know and that's really crazy and people like hip pain can cause you to have headaches and that's that's that that blew my mind um over the you know when i first start realizing those kinds of things and i i am so i feel so blessed and so privileged to be able to offer uh, the summit not for just mainly so that people can know hey you gotta you only have one body like you know that you know kind of like in the back of your head so this isn't like groundbreaking information but when but the realization that yeah i really do only have one body i really do have to make sure that it's okay it's my job to make sure that i'm fine when i'm old right so i think that's the jam all right so let's go to the next clip when you are an alpha athlete, when you are the athlete that is like, I need to be out there, I want to be out there, it is so difficult to get that athlete to sit down. And so, which is why I'm excited about this series, because we're going to be talking about things, or they're going to be talking about things in the series that's going to try to encourage people that there are other methods that you can do. First off, to stay healthy, because that's number one, right? If you stay healthy, you don't have to, you don't have this injury, you don't have to have any surgeries. That's what you want. That's that's really where you want to be but in the same token when you are hurt recognizing that i can live to play another day longer probably if i stop playing while i'm hurt if i just rest this thing you know the world's not going to end especially in a high school match a college match even a professional match because you're not on the field on the court on what okay so I thought that was super um, important for the summit because we of the mindset that we give our our children when they are young. One of the things she did talk about is the whole pop up concept. If you get knocked down, just pop up, right? So I feel like this this is a for the summit side of things. It is really really valuable to be able to say look if your child is hurt if you are hurt and you know that you're hurt that it's important to say something so something can be done about it not just ignore it so erica this time let's start with you what do you think about that yeah it's like you uh live to fight another day it's like you don't have to uh just not say anything or bear with it uh for the team um one of the things i learned from her talk was uh you do take care of yourself when you um when you're not just uh, a team you're that one person and there's many one persons that make up a team so when you take care of yourself you're uh you're a link that's getting stronger or a stronger link when you take care of yourself fantastic <laughs> all right kevin what do you think yeah i mean i believe it's all about uh just the mindset because when you're in high school for one thing you're taught to get back up like Miss Pride has spoken of whenever you're injured and just try to get back out of it, get back out of it. And it's because of when you're in high school, um, you really don't have anything to fall back on if you do get injured. And so you're trying to prove yourself constantly in order to gain the opportunity that you're actually playing or, or whatever you are an athlete of for. You know what I mean? And so it, it's kind of a systematic um I don't want to sound like I'm being the dog, being the rug, you know, a dead rug or something, but it's like a systematic issue that needs to be resolved mentally amongst just our people and just amongst the masses, period. Like, um, the show that we have options, I believe it starts at home. It has to start as a child first, you know, just knowing that it's, it's more than one way to get that scholarship. You don't have to kill yourself, literally, like kill yourself, kill your body. In order to get a scholarship, you can actually get a scholarship with your mind or other talents. And, um, it is is actually it's actually it's actually very harmful to you when you cuz i know i got up so many times man getting getting punished on that field and it's horrible it's horrible wow thank you for that insight that's that's wild to me so okay i my own experience and what happened to me was i was playing soccer but i was a cheerleader at the time and 
Um, the I kick the ball, a girl kicks my foot, and I ended up flipping over, right? And so it 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 ruined my foot. <laughs> And I ended up having to have surgery and having to, you know, wear crutches. And I was so embarrassed to be out on the feet, you know, be out on the field in my uniform with that thing on my foot. And so I just couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. And I just was so upset because I couldn't be part of the team. You know, I couldn't contribute to the team. And I really wanted to, but um, the pain that I was I was in was uh, extreme even after the surgery and my surgery in my opinion was a failure because they actually made my toe worse than it was I think even when it got injured playing soccer so I was I never got to be because I actually was going to run track I wanted to run track in the Olympics but that really messed up my toe so I wasn't able to and so I feel like there's a lot of things that we but if I but the thing is is nobody told me that I couldn't play anymore nobody said you need to rest nobody said you need to take care of your foot so that if that you have a future if you want to run I was so determined to get that thing off and get that pin out and try to go ahead and um, walk you know because that's what I had always seen so I didn't know any, I didn't know any better. And then to now look back, I'm like, man, <laughs> I was really trying it. <laughs> Cause it was like, that's like Kevin said, you, you're like, you'll get another, you know, like in your mind, you're like, oh, I'll get another foot. <laughs> you know, I can get another foot. It'll be okay. <laughs> My toe, I'll get another toe. Now let's go to the next clip. I, again, I was the ultimate competitor. I had known about, you know, the, the 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 great NFL players who play injured, the play, you know, hurt, that would go out there and, and just do what they had to do and find a way. That 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 was the stuff that legacies were made of. Can you can you overcome the obstacle? Can you brave the elements? Can you uh, resist the urge to, to to shrink back in the crucial moments? Can you work your way in order to to to, to get and achieve your goals and so I, I did that i bought all the way into it not realizing that high school sports was just that it was high school sports you got four possibly five years to, to, to do the different sports and then that chapter of your life is going to be over but I, I did what i thought i was supposed to be doing and i worked my way back Okay, so in this clip, he was talking about how his prowess as an athlete um, was compromised um, because of his perception that being injured was a rite of passage, I would say, into um, the elite level. So, Kevin, what do you think about that? I mean, I, it's, what Mr. Bowman said was definitely true. Um, it definitely goes through the mind of all athletes that's out here prospering and just working towards a, you know, a common goal, which may be a championship or a scholarship or just like a far out dream of just becoming a professional athlete and actually getting paid for something that they do. And, and we all know when we get into that athletic game that it's, injuries are going to be a part of it. We just try our best to hope and wish that it's nothing that's going to be like life threatening or life changing to a to an aspect to where we can't do what we love to do anymore and um it's just it's just a it's just some it's just a traditional way of thinking that's actually not correct and um we we all have been victims to that um i myself as well all right thank you for that erica what stood out to me the most is when he said it's high school it's just that like there's there's gonna be more stuff after high school. I mean, that's just a four year stay and then you're free to do whatever you want. You're free to move about the cabin. What's what's next? But if you spend all your energy, your time and your health in high school, you still got what, uh, maybe 80 years left to live life. Yes, <laughs> like, absolutely, <wow>. absolutely. <laughs> I, I can't even, I, I don't even know where to go with that from my, what I think about that. Cause I feel like watching 
my like children play sports has always been like cringe worthy to me especially like football um because i know what i went through as an athlete i mean i play i, I played i was a bowler i ran track i was a cheerleader um i played softball and i know that i was so ignorant and um, when they like they're like you angela even talked about this in her session about when we were younger they were like you need to stretch you need to be ready you need to do this i was half stretching talking laughing playing yeah. talking and crap with my girlfriends you know just like really not focusing on being uh being focused on my health you know that wasn't a thing it was like we about to go whoop some tail we're gonna win this game we're gonna do this we'll do that not even thinking about the future so i think that that is a, a just as much as we put into our kids heads that you know injury is a, a rite of passage we also need to say that being healthy to make it to your ultimate goal if it's a professional sport should be a rite of passage so i think that's important definitely definitely awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, I don't i've never that's bold for somebody to say that that they can just right. go keep you a spot for the rest of the year but um I, it didn't I happen didn't, though <laughs> okay good good <laughs> I, um, my, honestly, I'm trying to think if I had any kind of thing like that. Cause once I got my injury, you know, that was it. Thus introduced to me's second clip, which is also very powerful. Those young people, those children, they, they're not going to tell you my leg is, is hurting and something ain't right. They're not going to tell you that there's a clicking in my knee. They're not going to be, they're not going to tell you, oh, I can't, you know, they may say, oh, I can't really bend my finger, but you might think it's jam. And so you don't really pay attention to the signs that this might be a serious thing. Right. And so by the time they get to me on the varsity level or even at JD, uh, even JD level, by the time they get to me, I'm looking at them in tryouts or I'm looking at them in the AAU tryouts or whatever the case may be. And I'm saying, why are they running like you know, why, why, why is their movement disjointed? Why, you know, is there a lack of continuity as they transition between phases of running? And that's a telltale sign. No matter what sport you're playing, you know, well, a few sports like golf, you know, maybe bowling, you don't run, swimming, obviously. But if, you, if you're playing a sport where you are running, it's a telltale sign. When you can't run with fluidity, when you don't have, um, you know, a... a, a coordination uh, to your movements. I, it made me thinking, well, what happened to them when they were younger that causes them to move the way they're moving? And why was it, it addressed? And now you're looking at the at the coach, like why my baby didn't make the team? Well, maybe they should have stopped playing when they got injured at the YMCA league and really got that thing look, looked at and taken care of before we pushed them to just be tough and just go out there. You know, and so I, I think there's a level of care and concern um, that 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 goes into uh, what we do as coaches and what we do as parents, and 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 ultimately for the players to really be concerned about yourself and your future uh, goals that may not have anything to do with athletics. You know, I I I, I touted the athleticism, but I was a, a National Honor Society member. I graduated with a 3.5 GPA without trying. No, no effort academically at all. And, and so, you know, there, there was certainly more to contribute than just the sports. But, you know, those pats on the back feel so good. The rah-rah uh, feels, it feels so good. The celebration, it, 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 it gives us something that, that we don't get enough of. Um, for, for doing other things. And so we, we push our athletes to, to play injured and, and to play hurt. And, and there's a quote that says, um, I think it might be uh, Teddy Roosevelt that said, only you know when you're giving 100%, everybody else just knows when you don't, right? And, and that, you know, I used to use that quote all the time. 
you know, you know when you're giving a hundred percent. You know, other people are just on the outside looking in. They don't know what your body feels like. You know, they don't know the pain that you might be going through. They might not even know that you pop in multiple ibuprofen. You know, before you even go to a practice, they don't know. You know that you like are, can't sleep at night. You know, they don't know about all of those things. All they know is that it, it looks like you're going half speed. And so, as a coach, I even had to get out of out of judging and communicate with my players uh, even more. I'm like, you have to be honest with me. And I have girls who are tough as nails who don't want to tell me that they're, that they're hurt or they're injured because they think they're going to lose their spot or they think, you know, the team is going to you know, look down on them and stuff like that. And guess what? Guess what? That's a part of life. That's a part of life. But if people only value you for value you for your performance, you got to change your circle. That part right there, that just blew me. Because I'm just like, if you are only valued for this, you got to change your circle. <laughs> Mr. Booker, what do you think about that? Yeah, that's definitely true, especially when you uh, in the high school or even middle school athletic level. Uh, I think like he was speaking on um, even more than it is about like actually like being great at it. It's about what you think everybody around you thinks about you from what you're able to accomplish with this thing and what circles is going to open up for you and what opportunities is going to, I'm going to get to go to this party. I'm going to get to go and, and chill with this person and be friends with that, with this group of people. Now I'm actually going to be accepted now because I'm actually good at this one particular talent or skill or athletic sport. And um, it's actually de detrimental to just our mindset and to just our way of thinking to, to what we put in our bodies on the line, man. And we actually losing out on much more than what we can ever gain because it's, it's only a small percentage of people that actually are granted with that opportunity to go to the next level and compete. And so um, it's just, as I spoke on before, it's just it's just a mindset thing. It's, you know, it's, it's the mentality has to first change. And if you only can be accepted by those who are just, you know, glad that you can catch a ball or faster than someone else, that's just so shallow in my point of view, man. And it's, and it's a lot of our people and just a lot of our, and just our community in, in general that just lost out over that ideal. It's horrible, man. He's absolutely correct. I feel like 100% agree with that. Awesome. 100%. So powerful. Okay. Sister Bates. Yeah, that stuff is real and uh, it messes with you, but you know, it's only four years and you got to move on. You get to have other stuff. Like he said, uh, he had a, um, a GPA uh, good enough for him to uh, move on to something else. So yeah, there's there's way more uh, better stuff, and you gotta find better circles. But just making sure that you are you are good. Later on, we're gonna have like other people come on and talk about all like you know, the different aspects, right? There's different layers and different. Um, perspectives you know there's like there's the physical mental emotional all those things contribute to your recovery so i'm um, so excited to continue this this summit so um okay so now we get to listen to me talk again <laughs> from my clip from the um session you look at um terrell owens for example tl everybody knows him um when he got injured his injury was significant. He had to have surgery because he had a broken bone and he had tissue damage. He took microcurrent or his trainer did and barometric pressure to be able to help him heal enough so he could play injured versus hurt or vice versa, depending on I can't remember which one Angela said is which, but anyway, the worst one. So instead of playing in the worst condition, he was able to play in the least in the in the least in the least injured condition, right? So then once, so he, the man ran hurt for 122 yards or some crazy amount of yards, even though his team didn't win, his contribution was amazing. And it was because he was able to use an alternative modality. Everybody loves Tom Brady or hates Tom Brady, depending on who you're talking to. But what he he uses a multiplicity of things. Um, everybody let, talks about LeBron James. He has spent lots of money. They talk about that, but it's because he's using these alternative 
options to be able to heal so that he can play longer so that he doesn't have to play hurt so that he doesn't have these injuries that are lingering that's um, inhibiting his ability to continue to be elite so that is my friends what is so important about this summer okay so that was me of course talking about um the the uses of different modalities now what's important and from my perspective about me right talking about me is that we we i was terrell owens was actually my inspiration to move into um wellness you know um i talked about originally how when i went into using microcurrent i started with beauty because you know when you more people are interested or no people will take action when they think that they can look better versus they can if they think they're just gonna actually be, be well which is kind of counterintuitive but it is it is true so what we find um with alternative modalities is that they help you to overcome the hurdles in recovery they they can help you in a lot of other ways so when you think about like tinctures and different things like that to actually help you with mm, i would say more medically inclined like diseases and stuff so because those were the first types of medicines but for this summit the idea is about recovery and so when terrell owens's story was very um motivational to me because i it proves my theory that you can recover at a greater level than you can um otherwise because it's just a challenge that you're having and you need help with so we've we've all kind of talked about things that have happened to us over our lifetimes and that we're still having challenges with and um so kevin talk to us about that i mean uh, just definitely um alternative options i know it used to be shown upon like when i was a child like going to the chiropractor um getting a dietitian, like taking your diet actually serious like it's so crazy to me to this day it's crazy to me how much diet actually affects your life and people like when i was growing up actually never paid attention to it like they were still killing mcdonald's wendy's fast food places they was just trying to survive and that's what i had to realize but um all of those different things like massage therapy chiro you know chiropractic work um dietitians so on and so forth they all can counter off each other and help produce and help you help anybody recover and not only recover but just prepare you constantly 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 prepare your body and prep your body to just continue to thrive and i don't think that people really understand that well i think they're starting to get around to it now but i i know it, and it used to be that no one actually cared about it and it's crazy to me now and those things are so critical and pivotal like when you out busting your you know you know giving your full form of action to just any type of whatever event or athletic um event that you're doing you don't understand the type of pressure that you're putting on your joints on your tissues on your tendons and so on and so forth just to try to get that goal that you're reaching and proper recovery is actually what's needed that's why we see like you spoke on the, Re the lebrons the tom brady's um just a lot of the athletes now of my generation that's actually taking it serious that's not laughing at it uh, actually like because because they see the the actual benefit of it but i just think it's again it's a mental mentality thing like back in the day i know people used to always want to they did it for the honor you know what i mean and the respect and people starting to realize that well i have to first respect myself and respect my body and respect you know my aspirations of what i need to do before i can like actually put on honor and respect of something else that may be much bigger than me but i can't contribute unless i respect myself enough to make sure that my health is fine and i don't think and i think nowadays that we we are actually taking hold to that yes sir yes sir that is magnanimous all right erica so, um my firstborn my oldest um had a diagnosis of autism and they told us there was nothing we could do but turns out um when we went to visit a, a nutritionist and a dietitian that helped a lot 
So um, finding uh, alternative uh, ways of doing things um, can be a game changer for you. Yeah. yeah absolutely. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so, all right, so here we go. Last clip of me talking. That you in your own personal life, whether you are a professional athlete or not, whether you become my client or not, or anybody's client that comes through this series, is that you have the ability to understand that if you are injured, that you can make it over the hurdle of the yo-yo cycle. So the yo-yo cycle is, is hurt. And then you get a little bit better. You do something, put a cream on it, breast it, whatever, whatever. And then you go back out and play or you just continue to live life. And then you hurt it again. And then so it goes up and down, round and round that yo-yo, round yo-yo. You go around the world, walk the dog, all those kind of things. And the point of it is that it is super, 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 super important that you, that you know that is that you have to be able to overcome that that one space so if this is the space between you not being injured and you being injured and you've traveled this road to here and you keep coming back to this place right here but you can't get past it you need help you have to get some kind of um intervention so that you can get back to the place or at least as close to the place as possible of not being injured that's extremely important that is i would say that is my most fundamental principle that i like to share because it is the most i would say heart-wrenching and degrading experience to go through say you go through a surgery you go through physical therapy and oh my god i'm gonna be fine i'm doing well and then you get back out there like tremaine talked about that where he was he thought you know he did the physical therapy they told him that he was good and then he went out and tried to play even though he was still limping and knew that his ankle wasn't well and he tried to play and it tore something else right because so the dynamics of that is 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 what we call collateral damage at lux maverick and collateral damage is where can like tissue surrounding an injury is strained also and if you don't reju rejuvenate that tissue as well, even though the focus was put on to address the, in the original injury, that trauma is expansive and you have to reestablish the functionality within the limb to the extent that the damage was uh, incurred. So when that's the, when you don't meet the forces equally, you end up with that yo-yo cycle. And, and that is so hard and so difficult to see. We all have seen it happen to people. We probably have experienced it, especially if, you know, especially Kevin with your knees and Erica with your knees, you know, you're like, you know, I'm fine, everything's good. Then all of a sudden you go to step off a curb and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't hang out with your kids at the at the um, at the amusement park or or you can't you know walk from the car you know somebody got to come get you in a cart or something you know so those are the things that like like affect your quality of life so what we're trying so hard really and truly in this summit is to help people understand because we we get to the place where they're like oh you have to live with the pain now that was the most heartbreaking thing that i have ever been told by a client and it but it happened repeatedly so the first time and my first foray into actually really focusing on 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 recovery was i had a client she came in and she said, the doctor said, the doctor's office just said that I have to learn to live with this pain because there's nothing else that they can do. Um, the scar tissue is too significant 
and um, they haven't been able to figure out a way to um, help me n not have this hot poking, hot iron poking feeling. Um, and if I don't just lay on the couch and and just do nothing, that I can't even stand the pain. And sometimes the pain is so great that all I can do is just cry and and bear it. And that broke my heart. Like I couldn't believe that she that they were that that that, that was her her fate. And um, then I helped her, and she was it was unbelievable. You know, we, I, I worked on her and she went home and she was like, I was able to vacuum. I was able to cook. I was able to, you know, walk around. I didn't have pain for, for weeks, but then it came back <clears throat> and I couldn't understand why I would come back. So then I say, like, okay, so come back in. Well, that's when I started to see that scar tissue is, is if you have, if you, if you have scar tissue that you can see. Most of the time, there's scar tissue deeper that you can't see, and then even deeper, and then it's collateral. So that that's kind of how it goes. So it's not just on the surface. It's not just what you feel. It's also expanded, you know, because there's all different types of scar tissue. You can get scar tissue from inflammation. You can get scar tissue from irritation. You can get scar tissue from surgery. You can get scar tissue just from stressing about the scar tissue. You can get scar tissue from scratching it because it's itching. You, I mean, it's just all kinds of things is happening because that trauma has not been resolved. So what I, what I, what I, what I learned, um, over the years and why I, I literally decided that I needed to figure out how to master and crack the code of post recovery healing. That was why, you know, just to know that I don't want people to have to suffer like that all the time. Um, so I, in the beginning, it was like, it was, it was like, okay, so there was no roadmap. There was no, nobody to explain. There was nobody to find it. So, so I started digging and clawing my way through research and, and, and every time I heard about like this amazing thing, like Terrell Owens' story. And I like, I, I went through everything that they did. And then, then that led to another person. And like the guy who came up with Terrell Owens' um, process, like who did he figure that out from? And so then I start clawing, clawing. So I clawed all the way back, all the way back to the first guy who ever used microcurrent for a medical purpose. And his name was Jean Jalabert. And that guy was so incredible in his understanding of the body and how it functioned and, and all the different interconnective things. So that kind of made me know, okay, so it's not just about the injury, what else is going on? So it took me a, a lot of years to sort it out and figure it out. So that's why, you know, so now we have Lux Maverick and we're going to start helping other people understand how microcurrent works. But my goal is to train people on what I know so that they can like even do more things, right? Because I, I don't, I know that I don't know every single thing. I know that I am the best at helping you get over what's going on with you for sure. Like there's nobody who can pretty much do what I do, but it's, the, the way that this works is God created the body, we did it. So we don't know everything that there is to know about the body. So that's why now the whole medical industry is, is trying to pull in all these integrative medicine options. So 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 that was the point of, of my statement that you, you have to get past that yo-yo point or you're just going to keep bouncing instead of bouncing between the 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 worst and you know like the the middle point and the end right the pain and the not pain 
I don't know, the pain and the better pain, right? Because that's the thing. It's like, do you does the pain ever go away? Like you're always sitting in some form of pain if you've been injured and not been able to recover past that point. Okay, so that's that's essentially how it goes. But you want to get to the place where you don't have pain at all. You don't want pain. You don't want inflammation. You don't want limping. You don't want have to. You don't want to have to take a whole bunch of ibuprofen just to be able to walk your kid to the freaking bus stop. Right. So those are the kind of things because and then because you always have the side effects of taking all those chemicals. Right. Even if it's just constipation and tiredness. I mean, it's a lot. So. All right, Erica, I know I went on, but that's I mean, this is this is the whole point. This is the soapbox that we're on. I learned a lot from you. Um, so, yeah, take your uh, soapbox stand. <laughs> uh, what um, I got from it is that. Um, People who really want to play, they find other options and um, they don't give up. And if you have an option that works for them, it's like, finally. Because <laughs> um, when, you, when you're looking for a solution, uh, you don't want to give up. And you want uh, someone to uh, keep their words. Set. If they tell you they have a solution, you want them, you want to believe them. And you want them to keep their word and have something that will work for them. So, yeah, I definitely understand that. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I just think um, it goes back to to the, just the mind of an athlete or anybody that's just doing something with, with purpose. They they gotta have a re relentless mindset. They don't ever want to give up, regardless. So they constantly trying to fight back to get back to a hundred percent so they can go back and compete. But I, I heard LeBron James say on his um on his on his podcast on this show that he has on HBO called The Shop. Like no matter whenever you face that first injury, no matter how big or small the injury is you'll never be back to 100%. I mean, you may get back to like 98% or 95%, but you'll never be 100% again. So you're constantly trying to learn how to adjust your, your tactics in order to do what you need to do on the field or the court or just on the track. And therefore that collateral damage continues to build and build and build if you don't get treated properly. And that just goes for like, and, and, and I, I don't think that people really realize, especially when they're young, like, okay, if you don't get it resolved right now, when you get, okay, you 16, 17, 18 right now, but what about when you get 25 and you, you're you a little bit older? So those joints and those tendons are a little bit more tighter. They're not as loose as they were when you were younger. When you get a little bit older, you're gonna gain weight because you're not doing what you're doing every day anymore. Like you're not gonna play forever. And that gonna, you know, gonna add more just pain and, and more restriction to your joints and whenever you walk into your legs and your knees. Um, and they just don't understand those collateral points that is going to also contribute to that collateral damage from that injury that might have happened when you were 16 years old it may not even be playing professionally but you was just practicing or you were just playing around with your friends like as just 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 like as a rec league not even as a professional rec like recreational game they don't really yeah. understand that wow well, you guys, I really super hyper appreciate y'all coming out here on Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I really appreciate it. So, last question. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Erica first because I'm I'm sure you're gonna come with all that 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 knowledge about this <laughs> this game today, Mr. Booker. So, oh, uh, <laughs> Erica, tell us who you think gonna win the Super Bowl. I can't even tell you who's playing. <laughs> and uh, I asked my phone last night. It told me, and I can't tell you who's playing. <laughs> it's all like right, all right. competition for me. Unless I'm in it, I don't care. <laughs> okay, okay, I feel you. I feel true you. competitor, a true competitor. <laughs> all right, Mr. Booker. Yeah, I, mean, I had the opportunity. To really, I had the opportunity to really watch uh, the NFL this season. Um, I'm a Carolina Panthers fan because we are. I'm from South Carolina, and we really don't have like a specific team in that area. Our team. And they, of course, they didn't make it. They were horrible this year. But um, it's it's kind of hard to pick against the Rams because of the way that the team and the organization built around so many pro athletes that they've gotten to come to the organization, as opposed to the Bengals, because um, they don't they, they really they don't have too many superstars as much as the Rams do. Like they got the Rams already have like Hall of Fame Hall of Fame players, whereas the Bengals got to prove themselves prove themselves today. Um, but you never know, because I mean, I remember when Tom Brady won his first Super Bowl. He had a lot to prove, and nobody really knew of him. And Joe Burrow is in the same position right now. But I, I honestly think the Rams want to pull it out of that. Their defense are impeccable. Awesome. 
Well, y'all know I don't know. I try not to. I try not to watch the games because I'm always like, oh my god, and or or I'll see somebody come out on the field, and I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna get hurt today. And people always ask me, how do I know that somebody's gonna get hurt? It's like your body mechanics are off. I always you. I don't know how I got this gift. I promise I have no idea. But it's always been that way my entire life. And and I it, it stresses me and I'm like, so they're gonna get hurt today. And and, and I have I, I've talked to players before and before they even go out, I'm like, look, you you need to you need to let me work on you because it's it's some you I know I can't put my finger on what's going to happen, but I know you're going to get hurt. And some people listen to me and some people don't. But I know ahead of time, if your body mechanics is off, if Tremaine talked about little kids and seeing them come out and try out and they don't make it because they don't have fluidity in their movement and they don't. Those are those are things that if you watch bodies, you know, much, much, much like way way ahead of time that there are they are in danger of getting hurt because there's not enough stretching there's not enough uh you the knee is off the the gait is off the you know they could have they could have um tried to like play a sport like do something you know like um uh you know like even though you play football you go play basketball well you use different muscles right or or whatever and so you end up in a situation where your your posture is off so now what you going to do or the last game you played you got you know people are talking about they got sidelined or they got hurt or they got this or they got that and i'm like okay so you if you that's how come chiropractic care is really important right because if your skeletal is off you're gonna have problems you know you know i don't tell people I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't encourage people to come see me when I know that there's another modality that's better, uh, or for this particular problem. So that's why it's so important. Like I remember uh, football players when I was younger, they used to take dance classes. They used to do ballet. Mm -hmm. And so could, because they needed to be able to have body awareness. I don't know whatever happened to that or why they stopped doing that. But now I know that a lot of players do yoga and they don't do it. And then when they're first starting out, unless they are just that enlightened, I guess. But you have like when they get after they get injured and they've been playing a while and they find that they're getting tighter or, or um, more uncomfortable, then they start doing yoga. But it is so important so important to be aware and to have somebody who can externally look at you and go okay something's off and have a solution for you and that's kind of that's really what i i that's why this summit is so important and why i really wanted to take the time to really create this with erica so that the world can understand that you can you 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 can prevent injuries for sure you can recover from injuries faster once you get them because the faster you recover n not but for something external but the faster that you recover so for the simple fact that you are going to be able to reduce your collateral damage now that is critical and people miss that so much. So I am super hyper excited that we are going to be doing this summit and um, getting people out there. Now, you guys, this summit is no longer going to be free. So you won't have to pay to come to the rest of the event, but it's really so that we can sew into um, the, the, the concept of spreading the word uh, of, of what we're doing um and that the um, tickets are available it's 97 dollars to get access to the rest of the summit but you also get the recordings right erica so you could talk to the to the to that part of it i just get to talk about the stuff erica gets to talk about the rest of the business side of things there's um five more sessions and if you want access to all of those sessions s97 dollars but you can uh, buy uh, single tickets at $47, but you will not get the recordings. Okay. So how can they find out where to get that from, Erica? 
So anywhere you can find us on social, there's a link for it. Um, there is a Facebook uh, event page for uh, Master Your Recovery Virtual Summit Series. Uh, there is a LinkedIn uh, event page under the same name. You can also find us on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and we're, we're all over the place. Yes. So we are so happy to have all the viewers to be coming. We, we have been getting bombarded. We, you guys, we have gotten so much positive feedback about the first session. So if you are on the fence about getting your ticket, go watch the first session and then you can see that it is definitely worth a view. Um, all right. So Erica, your closing remarks, anything? I've learned a, a good bit uh, from uh, attending the summit as well as producing it. Um, when Angela said that uh, always uh, look out for yourself, you always put yourself first. Uh, when uh, Tremaine said uh, there's not always going to be a pat on the back and you got to take care of yourself. And when Elle uh, spoke of uh, there's many different types of scar tissue, I was like, wow, all of those things were... Uh, great information for me all of those things just stuck with me so i'm looking forward to the rest of the event awesome all right mr booker we know that you you didn't get a chance to be part of the first session but you will be part of going forward so what do you think no just thank you guys i thank you guys for having me for one thing and then i just the value of what you guys are bringing through this summit is critical and it's just um, impeccable as far as for what everybody could need this thing for because people still to this day don't really know the importance of integrated medicine and, and how microcurrency, chiropractic work, having a dietrician and just how important your diet is or getting massages or just, just basically proper body treatment is um, just so pivotal for, for, your, for life today. And again, you guys are doing such a great job, such great work, man. Um, thank you for being on my show as well, Ms. Kersey. Thank you for allowing us to spotlight you and just give, it a, give a little advertisement to your to this summit because people need to know about this, man. This is definitely something progressive. Um, like like what Mr. Bowman was saying when he said um, high school is, is just high school. Like it's, it's not forever. And uh, you got to put yourself first. I mean, the best way for you to contribute to something if, you, if you're able to give your all. If you're not able to give your all, then you're not going to be at your best you're not going to be give what was needed you're not going to be fulfill your purpose so just make sure that you're taking care of yourself first so you can be able to fulfill your purpose awesome and so i'm gonna need some of that swag you got you know you guys he has the cutest swag for his his um for the podcast so well, i definitely need that little hat right there i'm gonna be rocking that it's my yeah, it's our urban brand Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. So thank you guys so much for coming. I am very honored and I feel very grateful that you guys could show up today on the Super Bowl Sunday. And we're going to get out of here so we can go start getting prepped for whatever bad stuff we're going to eat. Sorry about the nutrition part. Kevin, we gonna... <laughs> today is bad food day. <laughs> wing, wing. This is a national wing holiday. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's oh yeah, I had is. me some wings last night. Y'all don't even know. I was prepared. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right. So y'all have a great, great time. Okay, so Erica, you can stop recording now. <laughs>